up, YouTube? This is Psilocybin Rain from Ray's Trip Gaming, and today we're going to bring you how to customize your desktop in Windows 7. If you are a Windows 8 user, there are plenty of tutorials out there. I just am not well versed enough in Windows 8 to really provide any assistance to you. I would just probably help you mess things up. So we're going to get started by me reminding you. This video goes hand in hand with the blog post this week at Ray's Trip. Uh, the blog is located in the description below, and it will provide details on what I'm doing, uh, links to the programs, more more details. The video goes hand in hand with it because it actually shows you what's what and what I'm talking about here. Um, this is my desktop right here. Uh, for better or worse, I guess. It is my desktop. Uh, you can customize yours however you like. I'm just giving you some suggestions on program software and uh, how to do things. Remember, guys, this is Windows 7, not Windows 8. If you're comfortable enough to edit things and, and, and mess around a little bit, this is for you. If you're not, uh, I would advise reading into it a little bit more and getting more comfortable with your computer before you go messing with stuff because you don't want to mess it up. And... Uh, Secondly, if you do not have a lot of RAM, you might want to uh, be cautious, you know, try things out and see what, find that medium where it's not slowing you down and lagging you, but it's still what you want. With me, I'm running eight gigabytes of RAM and uh, I really see no frame per second dropping games, nor do I see uh, lag of any sort, things like that. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's kind of up to you to figure out where you want to be at. First of all, though, you'll download the third-party themes patcher because if you want to run third-party themes through Windows 7, you have to run the patcher. There's a link, again, in my uh, in my blog, which is in the description below. Once you have that ran and installed, you'll be able to download custom themes. Uh, I use a site called DeviantArt. It is also in my uh, my blog for a lot of things because it's, it's community-driven, community-make stuff. It's a community of graphic artists and artists. And just a really great place to get uh, get that, tools for uh, Photoshop, and much more. Uh, I use the Arius theme just because it really fits with what I'm going with here, uh, and it's really nice. Once you have your theme installed, whatever you choose, you know what you're going for, so look for something that, that is going to match what you're going for. Then, uh, then what we're going to do is, uh, you know, install the theme. Every theme should come with instructions on how to install. If they, for some reason, don't, you can easily Google how to install a Windows uh, custom or third-party Windows theme in Windows 7, and uh, it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions. It's really not that hard, but like I said, most everyone I've ever gotten, especially from DeviantArt, really does tell you how to install it. Uh, and uh, that's as easy as that for your theme. What my theme is... Obviously, you'll see it when I go to my personalized there. It's got the blue bar up there. It's got the little wires, the little little blue. It makes your backgrounds black and all that. It's just what I wanted. It, th these are my uh, my minimize, my close, and my maximize buttons. I'm going to go ahead and close that, and we're going to look at Rocket Dock. Rocket Dock is the first software that I'm going to be talking to you about, uh, actual software download. And this is Rocket Dock down here. Uh, it more or less you can program any program on your computer to be down here give it a nice cool button and uh it kind of replaces my uh my taskbar as you can see but uh it's it's simple one click we'll look at my uh my music folder Blam. brings up my music folder really easily um also it'll bring up programs whatever you want to do and uh, what you can do, and what I do, is customize it. And what, that's what's, what's so great about Rocket Dock is the customization. Go to Dock Settings here. You can change it, position it any way you want to. You can download on their website custom icons, which is what I've done. I've got the black and white pack uh, one and two from uh, one of their uh, their people. And uh, it's really nice as you see the black and white icons. And uh, also the style. I chose the vector theme, which is this blue and black space agey looking thing. Uh, you can click get more and it brings you to a website where you will get a lot of uh, a lot more to offer. So you can just pick what goes best with your uh, your idea. 
Really good program. The links uh, to that program are also in my blog, which is in the description below. All right, now we're going to talk about Rain Meter. Rain Meter is a great program as well, and it is the culprit for what is responsible for the white bar here, the white bar here, the cool little Windows button, uh, the to-do list. These are my application and bookmarks. You see, I can go to YouTube, I can go to Facebook, etc., Google. I can go to, uh, just click right here to bring up my Google Chrome, my Photoshop, my uh, music B, which is the music uh, player I like to use, or my Skype. You have to edit those. You have to go into the uh, i9 files and edit like what programs you want, how you want to open, and all that stuff. Uh, but uh, it really explains it to you uh, if, when you download any sort of add on for Rainmaker through uh, DeviantArt or any place else. It usually explains how to edit that with each one because each one is different. Uh, now I will bring up the Rain Browser, which comes with Rainmaker, once you have a, a Rainmaker theme installed, which again, it will tell you how to install it. Uh, I actually have a, a, a tutorial on the blog linked to the tutorial on how to, uh, how to install the add-ons for it. But, uh, we'll look at, uh, Browse. And I'm going to show you how to, qu once you have it installed, how to quickly, uh, implement them. We'll use Blue, Vi uh, Blue Vision version, uh, 0 0.2 here. And uh, let's just look at the RSS feed, shall we? I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to load scan. What that's going to do excuse me, is load the RSS browser here. And uh, yeah, it's for Google's news, and it will give you your, your Google news of the day. You can refresh it. All that stuff. It'll give it to you right on your desktop. It's not something I like to use because I, I, I like to go to certain news sites and read my news. Like that, I don't really need it on my desktop. It just clutters it up a little bit, in my opinion. But some people do like that news right away. That's one easy. That's one of a hundred things that come with that uh, that Blue Vision. It's just amazing. I'm gonna unload that. And that's all. If you want to get rid of it, you just click unload or exit out. Uh some of the things that I am using through Rain Browser is uh, this right here, which is shut down, restart, sleep, lock, uh, log out, or locks my computer. I keep the the buttons locked on this because you don't want to accidentally click to shut down your computer. And if you want to, you can easily just unlock it and then they become highlightable. Then you just click it and it does it. But uh, I personally keep that locked for safety. Uh, my little clock up here, it's 11, 12 a.m. Uh, the email button, this, this, all that. The to-do list, the sidebar, this sidebar over here. The start, the start menu button with the C drive, F drive, CP uses, and RAM usage all right here. Uh, all that is a rain browser. Um, I'll also show you, uh, like, is a dark glass is what this is. The, the two little bars on the side, that is dark glass. It's just really nice. It's really nice, customizable, and uh, pretty user-friendly once you get the hang of it. Uh, with that, if you see, I got my own custom start menu here. I got this where my taskbar would be. So I had to figure out a way to get rid of my start menu button and my taskbar. These programs are Start Killer and Hide Taskbar. I have links to those in the blog as well. What those do, and, and, you, and when you do that, you always want to make sure you put them in your start menu folder and make sure they start with the computer. That way, as soon as your computer starts, you just hit Control and Escape. And I'll show you real quick what that does. It brings up my, my start menu and, and my my start button, but uh, you hit control and escape in order to just get rid of both of them. So uh, that if, you're, if you're going with a desktop where you're gonna have this on the bottom, you have your own little custom start menu or whatever, if you don't want that bar down there or the start menu button, start killer and had test bar are for you. Now I'd like to talk to you about Display Fusion. Display Fusion is a great program. I'm not going to go through everything with you on Display Fusion, but it's for dual monitor users, multi monitor users, 
It allows you to put a desktop uh, I, a wallpaper, a separate one for each desktop. These are my two wallpapers. It also allows you to have a taskbar on both. I love this because while I don't have one on my main here, when I'm gaming, I like to have a taskbar on the other one just so my Skype's down there on the bar, my uh, my web pages are down there on the bar if I'm liking Facebook or Twitter or Twitch TV if I'm streaming. Uh, all that's down there on the bar, so I don't have to alt-tab all the time. And also, I have my clock down there, my normal, you know, clock, and, and my uh, my button so I can, like, right-click and uh, mess with the uh, the sound or whatever I need to mess with. That's on the second monitor. I'm sorry I'm not showing you that right now, but for some reason this program don't like showing my second monitor. Uh, but uh, it does that, and it, does, it has a whole slew of functions for dual monitor users. That's just a couple of them. Uh, you can get Display Fusion from their website or from the Steam store now, or however else you decide you want to get it. And uh, it really is an amazing program, guys. I would take a look at it for sure. And uh, next would be Raptor. Raptor isn't just a desktop widget, and I can't show it to you right now because it's locked on my second screen, but it is a widget, but it's also a, a service you sign up for, and it's kind of like a Facebook for gamers. If you're not a gamer, Raptor isn't for you. You can skip right over this. If you are a gamer, it, it links you with communities. It tracks your hours, not only in the Steam games you play, but every game you play. Um, it has giveaways all the time, in-game stuff, uh, through rewards. It's just a beautiful place. Uh, communities on almost every game you can think of where you can go. Uh, when I started playing Payday 2, I met a lot of my really good uh, friends who were pretty pro at the game by giving a shout-out on Raptor that I was new and I needed some friends. So uh, that worked really well for me. Uh, I would suggest Raptor free, so there's no point in not at least trying it. I'd suggest that for any gamer out there. Now, the last thing I want to discuss with you guys is Fences. Fences is a program by Stardock. Again, it's linked into my blog. There's a link to it, so you can check it out. It is a pay program. You can get it from their website or whatever means you see fit. Uh, all that does is if I double-click on my... Well, the, my my thing here, you'll see this come up. This is my games. I usually keep this on the second monitor, but I brought it over here to show you guys. Uh, I like to have my games and a few icons. There's a few other icons I like to have uh, on my desktop instead of in this bar down here, making it cluttered and longer or whatever. Uh, my games is one of them. I keep it on the second monitor. If you can kind of picture that in your head, how it would be sitting on the on the corner there. And uh, with all my, all, this is just the games I currently am really playing hardcore. I have over 90 games in my Steam library, so I don't keep them all logged in at once or downloaded at once, if you will. Um, how you create a, a, a fence is right-click the screen and drag yourself a little box, however you want it shaped, whatever. You can change it later, and then let go of the right-click, and you would create a fence, and you could title it uh, games or uh, programs, whatever you want to download it, uh, name it. Once you drag your icons into but that's the gist of it. And once you have that done now, you can change the, w the way these looks. I like them being gray with, with like that. Kind of see through ish, but uh, it don't matter because uh, one, you know you can just double click the the desktop and they they go invisible. So you you're all pretty. And if you need it, you double click, double click your game, and double click again, and it's back hidden. Uh, it keeps things nice and neat, but it also gives you the option of having some icons on your desktop without it cluttering up your desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that fence. It's that easy. I'm going to go, uh, yeah, make it invisible. Um, like I said, guys, make sure you look at the bottom in the description and go to the blog. It will give you links um, and more in-depth uh, discussion on each thing I've listed here on each program, on each uh, theme. And uh, hopefully it'll help you out a lot. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I'm going to go ahead and get off here. And this is Psilocybin Rain with Ray's Trip Gaming. And uh, until next time, guys, I'll see you in game.